Well, one of the fascinating stories of the California Gold Rush is the story of an artist, an entertainer, who never came to California. This is the story of Jenny Lind. And Jenny Lind was a Swedish operatic soprano who was known as the Swedish Nightingale. And she was very popular in Europe, and so popular in Europe, in fact, that P.T. Barnum, the, uh, the great empresario of, uh, of showbiz and kind of flim-flam during this time period, signed Jenny Lind to a contract to do 100 concerts in the United States without having heard her sing a single note. And so when she came to America, there was this Lind mania that broke out. Uh, P.T. Barnum writes about this in his autobiography, and he says that we didn't have to promote her much because she was so, so popular, but soon there was Lind scarves and Jenny Lind perfume. There was race horses named after her. There were cigars that were called Jenny Lind cigars. There were packets of Jenny Lind cigarettes. Uh, she was promoted. She was merchandised. And she was so popular that when the California Gold Rush hit, many of the, the people who came from back east or from Europe or from other parts of the world brought with them this mania about Jenny Lind. And when they came to California, as a result, there were Jenny Lind hats that were sold in San Francisco. There were Jenny Lind clothing. There's Jenny Lind furniture. There was a wagon called the Jenny Lind that was commonly used. And there were many hotels. There were mines. There's a town in Calaveras County called uh, Jenny Lind that was named after her. And up here in Nevada City, there was a theater built called the Jenny Lynn Theater. And according to the accounts, it either straddled Deer Creek, uh, like a bridge, or it was probably cantilevered over the, uh, over the creek, which I think is more likely. And in 1852, there was a huge flood, very similar to what happened in 2017 here in, uh, in Northern California. And the flood swept down through Deer Creek and among the structures that were destroyed was a boarding house called the Illinois Boarding House, and right next to it was the Jenny Lynn Theater. And it was washed down Deer Creek and shattered. Well, according to the newspaper account, this was in March of 1852, the Alta California newspaper uh, said uh, this. It says, we have intelligence of a heavy disaster by flood at Nevada, meaning Nevada City. That was the original, one of the original names of the town. Two quartz mills, the Jenny Lynn Theater, and the Empire Hotel have been washed away. The river was rushing in a foaming mad torrent through the lower part of the city. Great excitement existed, and fears were entertained for the safety of that action of the town. Several uh, houses were swept down and considerable damage sustained by the merchants. According to other accounts, county histories, the Jenny Lynn Theater was the prominent theater in Nevada City. There was Shakespeare and there was comedy and there was kind of music hall uh, there. It was called, one his, county history called it a pretty little building. And when it got washed away and, and was destroyed, it was heartbreaking to the people of Nevada City because this was their entertainment center. And so there started to be stories that were floating around anecdotal stories about what had happened to the Jenny Lynn Theater and the grapevine being the grapevine. According to some accounts, it started to spread through the gold fields that Jenny Lynn, the person, had been destroyed, had died. That Jenny Lynn has disappeared, Jenny Lynn is dead. And it led to great sadness in this, uh, this part of the world and it started to filter back east that somehow Jenny Lynn had passed away. And it wasn't, it was the theater that had been destroyed. But it shows the level of popularity and the level of interest people had in this uh, extraordinary figure who never came to California. And she was so popular throughout the United States that it led to a kind of mania. It was called Lind Mania, named after her very much akin to Beatlemania that took place here in the United States and around the world in the 1960s.